So here we're going to talk in more detail about step growth polymerization. But before we do that, I find it helpful to uh, sometimes identify some of the materials that are produced using each of these polymerization mechanisms. I think you'll find that there's some familiar kinds of materials, uh, and this helps us get a picture, uh, a mental picture uh, of the reaction mechanism that will be useful later. One class of materials that's produced using step growth polymerization are so-called nylons. And remember, nylon is a trade name. Uh, this is one example uh, where you have two monomer units. One of them is uh, an amine, a hexamethylene diamine, and one of them is an acid, a deepic acid. So the functional groups are the amine groups uh, on, uh, on this molecule uh, and the acid groups on this molecule. Those then react uh, and join these two monomers to form the following repeat unit plus water as the condensation product. This repeat unit structure is referred to as nylon 6-6. Uh, and the reason for that is there's a naming convention for nylons. There's different classes of nylons uh, that are numbered based on the carbon units that are present uh, in the repeat unit and the monomer units. And the naming convention uh, is as follows. The first digit represents the number of carbons on the amine uh, monomer. So uh, here uh, there are six carbons on this group. And then uh, the second number is the number of carbons on the acid or the acid chloride, the other uh, monomer unit. So you can see this has four carbons uh, on this uh, CH2 group plus uh, two additional carbons. So there's six carbons uh, on both of these groups. So this is designated as nylon 6-6. Now you can see that uh, by looking at this reaction mechanism that this uh, is a condensation uh, type reaction. So sometimes this is called condensation polymerization because uh, you have this byproduct that's produced. The other thing I want to point out is that in this case, uh, the repeat unit for the polymer is not the same thing as the monomer unit. These two you have two different monomer units uh, that combine together to form the repeat unit. So there's a distinction here. In this case, there's two monomers per repeat unit. Another uh, way we can illustrate this is another uh, kind of nylon or another member of the nylon family. Here I'm going to show nylon 610. Uh, so the basic uh, structure is similar, as you might expect. Uh, we have a, a, an amine uh, in this case, the same amine uh, that was uh, used for nylon 6-6, but in this case, it's reacting with an acid chloride. Uh, so these two functional groups then combine uh, to produce uh, this repeat unit plus a condensation product of HCl. This repeat unit then is designated as nylon 610 because remember the first digit represents the number of carbons in the uh, amine group containing monomer, and the second digit represents the carbons in the acid or acid chloride. So we have eight carbons plus two uh, is 10. So this is designated as nylon 610. Now, the other thing to notice uh, about these materials is the nature of the linkage that joins the two monomer units. So in this case, this is a amide functional group, uh, this NHC double bond O. So nylons are part of a gen more general class of polymers called polyamides or polyamides. Uh, and we'll see some more examples of those uh, a little bit later. Um, it's important to remember what these typical linkers are for uh, step growth polymerization because these are used often in tracking the progress of the reaction. Uh, as we'll see later, uh, spectroscopy methods are often used to determine uh, how the reaction is progressing and those kind of methods probe specific chemical bonds uh, in the sample. And so by knowing the nature of these linkers uh, and the spectroscopic signatures of those linkers, that makes it possible to track the progress of the polymerization reaction. Okay, another example of materials that are produced using step growth uh, polymerization uh, is uh, polyethylene terephthalate, uh, or it's abbreviated PET. So this is a maybe the most familiar polymer uh, today because it's used to produce water bottles uh, and soda bottles uh, for uh, disposable beverage containers. Uh, this uh, polymer is formed by a combination of two monomer units, ethylene glycol and terephthalic acid. These two monomer units join to form the following repeat unit shown here, uh, and then water uh, is a condensation product uh, of this reaction. 
So uh, the other thing we can note is that the nature of the linkage in the repeat unit is an ester functional group. So therefore, PET is an example of a polyester uh, structure. So I think we've all heard of polyesters or sometimes use that term uh, in terms of clothing uh, to refer to the fibers uh, that uh, make up the synthetic material that the fabric is produced from. Uh, and that refers to the nature uh, of the linkage uh, that's present in the monomer units or when the monomer units join to form the repeat unit uh, of the polymer. 